Well, one of the things that I love about Catherine is that she knows how to how to take um, what whatever atmosphere we're in because we we run into each other on the road quite a bit, and she has this amazing anointing for breakthrough. Catherine, I'm I'm so grateful that you carry this breaker anointing. That whether whether you're breaking through some kind of a spiritual resistance or just getting into people's hearts, you have an amazing ability to bring people into a place of encounter with God. Why why do you think encounter is so important in people's spiritual walk during this season? Yeah, that's so interesting that you said that because um, I think for 2022, encounter is something that God is bringing back to the church. Um, we've been really, really intellectual in our knowledge of God. And there's, you know, a book called The Knowledge of the Holy. And, and I'm going to, this is the Catherine translation of the quote, but it says that um, when it comes to the attributes of God and the character of God, it's darkness to our intellect, but it's sunshine to our soul. And wow. I think we're at a place right now um, that the church really needs the relational, experiential side of God in their lives. And even, you know, when we're talking about, um, you know, in relationships, there's so much healing, but you know, we, we read in the Bible over and over again about a hardening of hearts and, um, you know, eyes that don't see ears that don't hear. And the crux of that is if we had eyes to see and ears to hear, we'd be able to get healed. Mm. You know, he ends it. And, and I think, and he says, well, you know, there's, there's things that happen when we're soft to the experiential side of the presence of God, to the relational side of the presence of God. So I think right now God is really wanting in 2022 to move us. Not The intellectual side is necessary and a huge part of who God is. But if we're not experiencing what we know of God, then what's the point of a relationship? You know, and so I think he, I think he's really emphasizing, quote unquote, the experience in 2022. The church needs to experience his presence in a fresh way. I think I think that's amazing because I think I, I agree with you. I think a lot of times the church just wants to put God in a nice, neat little box uh, that we can understand. But he is beyond our box. He's beyond our understanding. And I think the more that we let him really break out of the box, both in our times of personal encounter, as well as in our times of corporate encounter, I believe yeah. that's when we're going to really see God's glory come and manifest in a very tangible, experiential way. I think that the church has become kind of heady, kind of like, let's let's sing the songs, let's say the words. But they don't they I think that we have a generation that has been void of the actual spiritual encounter and the transformation that actually comes when we encounter God. What have you experienced yeah. in the way of of transformation? I mean, not just individually, but in, on a corporate level. It's a great question. So I think exactly what you said, um, you know, that we, we're all up in our heads, which is not a bad thing. We need to understand the scriptures. But when I look at a generation, you know, intellectualism is all good and well, but if they're still bound and in their chains, it doesn't matter. And so what we're seeing is a, is a generation hungry for that relational, experiential side of God. And um, there's really been this fight against, um, I think, in the church for us to forget the altar side of ministry. But, but we need that transforming work in that moment. We need to make room in our services again for God to transform the lives of people. And that happens in altar moments. That happens when we make room for Holy Spirit to say what he wants to say, you know. And so we're seeing that um, really all over that people are saying, I'm hungry for the real thing. And it always gets back to that. I'm hungry for the real thing. And I really think the anecdote for all this intellectualism, because I'm hearing so many young people, they, they come up with all of these you know, kind of high sounding nonsense. That's what the Bible Bible calls it, high sounding nonsense. And it sounds good, but if you're still in your chains, then something is missing. And so people who are making a decision to press into that experience, we're seeing chains break all over the place. And that's what, that's what I'm here for. I love it. In times of worship, people get healed, set free, delivered. They have, they have these, these life altering, life changing moments. I know that I have. Um, throughout my throughout my walk with the Lord, I can yeah. point back on different encounter moments that I've had with God that have actually absolutely transformed me. Now, one of the things that Christian International has been known for is back in the 1980s and early 90s, we really pioneered 
the concept and the understanding of warfare praise. And uh, I feel like this year um, we're really in this place of I, I've been I've been for the last couple of years, ever since 2020, I've been in Second Chronicles 20. Um, yeah. And this and I, so I just kind of out of curiosity, I went and I looked at what the actual scripture for 2022, Second Chronicles 2022 was. And so yeah. interesting because it says um, it says that, of course, the story of Second Chronicles is that they're surrounded by all their enemies. Jehoshaphat calls for a fast. Um, yeah. A prophet stands up and says, hey, you're not going to have to fight in this battle. You know, the battle is the Lord's. But then he said, but tomorrow go out to the battlefield. <laughs> you're going to still have to yeah. show, up, show up for battle. And then, of course, the famous scripture that says, believe the Lord, you'll be established. Believe his prophets, you'll prosper. Um, and then the yeah. very next thing that he does is he, is, is he sets this, this thing in motion and he says, let's send the praisers out first. Let's send the praisers out before the army. I pulled up the same scripture this morning. It's so funny that you said that. Um, so we're tracking with that. Um, I believe there's so much power in praise. And when we connect that scripture to um, the prophetic word that Joseph is prophesying um, over, over the different sons, he prophesies over Judah. And he says in Genesis 49, he says, Judah, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemy. So there's like a lot of prophetic history um, behind, you know, Second Chronicles and and Israel's history with God and the power of praise um, in different battles, and so they go out. And what I love so much about it is that I, I think in 2021 there's been so much confusion. Um, really that the enemy has tried to attack the church with. And I believe what God is doing in 2022 is he's creating a reversal and he's causing confusion now in the enemy's camp. And it's almost like this plan of the enemy that was uh, coming against the church of a spirit of confusion and just, you know, hard situations. It's like God is turning it around as the people um, of God begin to praise in 2022. And the confusion that was meant to be brought by the enemy on the church is now being poured out on the heads of our enemies, you know, in the spiritual sense. And so I think, I think 2022 is going to be a massive year for praise and breakthrough. Amen. Amen. I, and so I, I want everybody to be in a place of expectation that as we come into this conference, it's really not just about information. It's not just about hearing the word of the Lord, but it really is about encountering. It's really about entering in. It's about this personal place of worshiping and praising the Lord, because we understand um, from all the past teaching that praise destroys our enemy. Um, I love the uh, the old NIV translation of Psalms 8 two that says, for this purpose, God ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and to still the avenger. And so I think that even as we're coming into beautiful times of worship where we're encountering God and being changed and transformed, God is literally taking our worship and our praise and breaking the teeth of our enemy. And as you said, taking all that fear, all that intimidation, all that junk the enemy's been throwing against us, and God's turning it around on their heads. And if you remember the story that they all turned on each other and yeah. destroyed each other, and then all Israel had to do is good Judah had to do is go in and gather up the spoil for three days in the Valley of Barakah, which means the yeah. Valley of Blessing. And so um, I, I always want to encourage people because people may be watching this that aren't familiar with maybe what, you know, are the cutting edge level of worship is that worship is more than just that which plows so that the word can go. Yeah. Worship and praise is a spiritual weapon in our hand that actually defeats the enemy before we even get to the word.